How's it everybody? I hope you all are doing well after this crazy English paper one. It is week two of the matric final examinations and I just hope that you are managing yourself. Well, you're probably prepping for maybe a history paper tomorrow? Or alternatively, Friday is D-Day, you're either writing maths or maths. So let me upset you a little bit more. Here's the memo for today's paper. Um, look, I'm not going to do the whole comprehension and the summary. All the requests that I received from most of you guys uh, were just for the language section. Um, the comprehension is a bit hard to like keep flipping and swapping and dipping and going back and forth. And yeah, same with the summary. So we're just going to go through uh, language structures and conventions, just this portion. Um, with the comprehension and summary, it is more or less like kind of subjective language, grammar, it's important there in the summary. Um, not, not so much here. Um, the memo is rather broad, but or not all that much, but I will credit all alternative responses. Um, you guys will probably leave your answers in the comments, uh, and you'll have some of your peers, uh, replying as well. Um, I'm probably just gonna like the comment, to be honest with you. I don't want to start fights with you guys, uh, two days before maths, but yeah, that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay, so compost, recycling the way nature meant it to be. International Compost Awareness Week. Okay, they're not selling you anything here. They're just raising awareness. Recycling, natural, beneficially, homemade, organic, convenient, environmentally, greener. Okay, okay, cool. Thanks for all of that. Um, We can see it in the petals there of that flower. Okay, text D. Yeah, no, look, by the way, I won't give like a whole answers. I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. This is my opinion as an English educator. Well, I mean, I teach pretty much every subject out there, um, but yeah, this is my opinion. Not not really, I'm, I'm quite sure of these answers. So, what is the impact of the exclamation mark in compost? In text D, well, the exclamation mark, it conveys enthusiasm and urgency, immediately attracting the reader's attention. It emphasizes the excitement and positivity associated with composting, suggesting that it is not just practical, but also inspiring and rewarding. So enthusiasm, urgency. Okay, so that's my little answer. Uh, provide the root word for recycling. Uh, recycling, uh, I-N-G, it's a gerund. What's the root word? Uh, it's gonna be recycle. Nice mahala mark there for everybody. You know, just while we're in between this video, you can just let me know in the comments if you've got like any video requests. I try my best to meet all those requests. Um, so yeah, I'll be dropping videos for pretty much every major subject that is going to be examined over the next few days, few days, few weeks. I mean, you're, you're not even near like done finals, just by the way. There's, um, there's a heavy period ahead of you. Yeah, don't worry, I know what it's like. Um, my final period was like seven weeks, you know, all those years ago, way back when. I was a, I was a 2019 matric. Okay, next, compact, make your trash more appealing. Haha, <laughs> see what you did there, dad joke. Put your food scraps into the green card. Composting, a very good idea. Okay, so bunny. Um, compost, let us do more for the environment. Oh, compost. Composting, everyone's doing it. No, not really. Most people are just trying to survive in this economy. We're not really kind of focused on composting. Most can't even afford rent. Okay, like the price of white bread now is like 25 rands. Like you work, like the minimum wage is in and around 25 rands in South Africa. So minimum wage workers, they work one hour for like 13, 14 slices of thick sliced bread. And here they are telling us that everyone is doing composting. Ha! Huh, what a lie. What a joke. Okay. Um, one advertising technique um, used in text E. Give one example to support your answer. So we've got loads of puns here. Uh, there's a lot of wordplay. And here's my explanation of it. So the advertisement uses puns such as make your trash more appealing, a very good idea, let us do more, <clears throat> which are humorous plays on words. And this technique, it captures the reader's attention and makes the message memorable, creating a positive association with composting. So I think a solid mark there for identifying the technique and two marks for a clear uh, explanation as well as an example. Uh, 3.4, let us do more for the environment, replace the word, uh, oh, sorry, let us do more for the environment. That's going to be let us. Text D and E, so refer to both text D and E here, over here and over here. In your view, which visual image conveys the advertiser's message more effectively, justify your choice? So possible answer here, um, perhaps it's text D. So text D conveys the message more effectively because the image of a plant growing out of compost, as we can see here, visually symbolizes regeneration and the natural recycling process. The typography, shaped like leaves, uh, reinforces the theme of sustainability. 
While text E is a bit more humorous and there are attractive visuals, text D appeals more deeply to environmental awareness and um, it clearly illustrates how composting benefits nature. That's my answer. I think clearly text D. Unless, you know, maybe you're attracting like a younger, funnier, more humorous kind of crowd, but I think text D really gets the point across. Watch out. So here we have the cartoon Zitz by Jerry Scott and Jim Borgman. So we've got the young man, the man, and the woman. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks, Jeremy. It's a fishing lure that I bought myself with my own money that I earned working at my first real summer job. It's not the gift, it's the context that counts. <laughs> so the father is like, okay, like, okay, thanks for the gift, but I'm way more grateful uh, that you've got a job. You've got this job, you're earning your own money, you are self-sufficient, you are on your way to some level of independence, like that's that's what I'm happy about. It's, you know, it's a like a play on, uh, it's the thought that counts, no, for the man, it's the gift that counts. Uh, if you don't know, a fishing lure is a harmless device often made of plastic or metal, so just a nice glossary there. 4.1, what is Jeremy's attitude towards his father in frame one? Well, to be honest with you, he's got a kind of disinterested kind of look. Looks a bit like indifferent. It's not like super happy or super sad or anything. It's like, you know, it's kind of like foreboding. Like what's, what's going to happen next? Like, okay, happy Father's Day, Dad. Like, okay, it's meant to be a happy, joyous kind of thing. But his emotion is just kind of blank over here, Jeremy. Sorry, I just, I just felt like doing that outline just, just for the sake of it. Almost unimpressed at the whole situation. 4.2, the parents' relationship. The parents' relationship. So between each other. So the parents, they appear rather relaxed and rather accustomed to each other's company. The father's body language suggests that he is rather comfortable. And the mother's calm posture indicates perhaps some level of patience and understanding. They're a familial central nucleus kind of unit. And this reflects a rather stable and familiar marital dynamic. I mean, that's what I believe. You, you know, they seem to have a very good relationship. They are on the chair together. Yeah, it seems they, they're in a healthy relationship. Unlike you. Okay. They're playing you. No, no, I'm, I'm joking. Maybe you found the love of your life in high school. Or maybe they're just jawling on you, chief. I don't know. Regardless, just, uh, yeah, be on the lookout, hey? Hey, people are hectic in high school. And yeah, it doesn't get better, hey, let me tell you. Who heard Goon? 4.3. Refer to frames 2 to 5. Suggest why the cartoonist prolongs Jeremy's speech. Well, Jeremy's overly long explanation, it builds some level of comic tension. Now, the unnecessary detail, it contrasts with his earlier, like, disinterest almost, revealing teenage inconsistency, perhaps, and exaggerating humor. It's a fishing lure that I bought myself. So yeah, that kind of suspense is drawn out and uh, yeah, solely for satirical or comedic effect rather. Now, 4.4, kind of there at the bottom. Uh, refer to frames 356, critically discuss how the cartoonist uses irony to establish humor. So it is ironic that Jeremy initially acts uh, like a little bit uninterested almost in fishing, but later he gives a long kind of monologue here. So it's just, it's solely indicative that he is a teenager, you know, he's trying to like get through to his parents like, yeah, look, I, I work for this. And I'm giving you this gift. Like, this is my money. Like, this is not money that you gave me. Like, mom didn't give me this money to buy it for you, dad. I did it myself. And it is, it is very humorous because that is the sole purpose of this cartoon. It's a fishing lure that I bought myself. And so on and so on and so on. So he's giving his father context. And ultimately, three, five, they're a nice build up for frame six where the father... Ultimately, it's not for him. It's not the thought that counts. Like, not the thought of, yeah, no, my son knows I love fishing. Like, I'm going to receive this from him or so on and so on. I'm grateful for this gift. But, oh, thank goodness, my son, like, he's out of my hair. Like, I feel better now. Like, I raised someone who has the capacity to make money. Like, I've done my job as a father. And that's humorous. Like, the father is just, he's not happy at the actual fishing lure. He's happy that the kid has got a job. And that's the irony of it. So discuss both sides. Like, He's not entire. well, I mean, he's probably grateful for the fishing lure, but he's even more happy that his son's got a job. That, that's the whole ironical POV. State two functions of the apostrophe as used in frames one and two. So one and two, so fathers and its. So fathers, 
it's Father's Day, indicative here of possession, the day of the fathers, and that it's, uh, it indicates omission. So from it's, it should have been it is. Nice little question there. And look, as I've said in all the language videos, don't really waste your time reading this entire text G for some meaning. Hop straight into the questions. And if you're really battling, only look at the text for, well, context. So provide a suitable antonym for the word different, line two, in context. How is it that three children born of the same parents living in the same house all their lives can be so very, very different? Opposite of different here, this would be similar. The kids being similar, the kids being alike. An antonym is just a fancy word for an opposite. Identify the part of speech of grandly. Line three, there's grandly. It's going to be an adverb, adds to the verb. I know a few of you are looking for like a gerund today with the whole ing thing. Uh, refer to lines four to six. I messaged a photo of the crater and so on and so on. Rewrite the above sentences as a complex sentence by adding a suitable conjunction. If you guys just notice a bit of text there, uh, this is from one of my students who sent me this paper, Huria, just a big shout out to you. Thank you so much for providing me with this paper. Um, I think she wrote down for and but and oh, so some kind of fanboys question. Um, so as was most probably the, the correct answer here. So just as. So I messaged a photo of the crater in her head to her grandfather grandfather, the grandfather, the cardiologist, um, as he usually sews me up when I do stupid stuff. Um, so as should have been the key word here, uh, and then just change that age to a small age and so on and so on. Uh, he said that she needed stitches and that he wasn't doing it. So rewrite the above sentence in direct speech, uh, begin with grandpa said. So grandpa said she needed stitches and that she wasn't doing it. Okay. Because it's about she needing stitches. So she wasn't doing it at the end. So grandpa said she needed stitches and that she wasn't doing it. 5.5, correct the error of tense in 30 minutes later, us as parents, line seven to nine. So line seven to nine is here. So instead of being, it should be had been, while Sizzle silently endured three stitches, which had been put into her head. 5.6, uh, refer to lines 10 to 11. Choose the appropriate response from the list of options below. The subordinate clause in the above sentence is. So a, subord a subordinate clause, um, it's usually introduced by some kind of conjunction. So should be midway through the sentence, usually, usually. Um, and it is dependent on the main clause. So the subordinate clause here that cannot stand alone, is going to be B. 5.7, uh, I promise I haven't taught her to be a drama queen, she just is. Replace the comma with the suitable alternative punctuation mark so that the above sentence is grammatically correct. So I promise I haven't taught her to be a drama queen, she just is. A semicolon here could have been utilized uh, as it is separating two clear ideas, two important clauses. So why is the phrase modus operandi written in italics? Um, it's a foreign expression, this is Latin, so italics show that it is not English. Um, and that it's been used for some level of stylistic or formal effect. You know, that's not my MO. Uh, that's not my modus operandi. 5.9, replace a word used incorrectly in the last sentence with its homophone. Uh, hopefully you guys got this. Um, but she seems to navigate past the extremes. So it should be past, P-A-S-T. A homophone is a word that is pronounced the same but spelled differently. So in this question, past and past, uh, a lot of bad things happen in the past. Uh, if it was a homonym, um, then we could have said, oh, she passed the ball to me in the rugby match, something like that. So yeah, that is the memo for today's paper. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, it did it did take quite a long time to make, to be honest with you. I had to really settle down and understand it. I may have made a mistake. I really do apologize. I'm completely under the cosh making these history videos and then maths videos and maths lit videos. And I just... I gotta keep going, just move, move, move. And yeah, there's not much time to even uh, breathe <laughs> during the matric final examinations. But yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoy the video. Um, I did have a bit of fun making it. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Um, and for those who ask in a lot of the videos, if I provide uh, like online private tutoring, I, I definitely, definitely do. Uh, so you can feel free to leave like a comment under this video. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll reply to it. I'll tell you how to contact. So yeah, I, I tutor under the brand Leaves Tutors, uh, one of the biggest brands in the country. And yeah, I do uh, a lot of work for them. So yeah, I uh, hope to see you guys soon uh, privately um, in like a one-on-one -on -one session. We typically use like uh, Google Meet to get it done and we tutor pretty much every subject in the syllabus. 
But yeah, all the best for your remaining examinations, guys. And um, look, I, I hate to be the one to be like, oh, please, please like and subscribe. But liking the video really does push it out to a greater audience. And yeah, leaving a little sub, it, uh, it makes Goon happy. So yeah, thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening or morning or well, afternoon. Just enjoy your life. Okay, love you, bye.